Hi, everybody. This is Aaron, Jen, Mike, and Shannon, and we are here to watch Jen talk about how she uses Socrative or Socrative, uh, about how she uses that in her classroom. So, Jen, if you want to get started, I'm all ears. Okay, I say Socrative. I hope that's right. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go ahead and go to show you my screen here. So this is uh, the home screen that I always start with. Uh, if I'm going to start a quiz, I'll have those loaded here with the start a quiz, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, I have not personally done the quick question or the space race or the exit ticket yet, but I've seen it done, and I kind of like this idea of the space race, so I'm just going to go there real fast. You can pick one of your quizzes, so I have several quizzes that I've done. Um, I'll just pick this one, for example. You can have number of teams if you wanted to. You could... Um, let the students select or auto assign teams and I'm pretty excited about this unicorn so that's the one I'm going to do and you could whoops, I'll say there's two teams for example you could have the students be in the blue team versus the magenta team and have them compete against each other and take a quiz and like have one side of the room do it versus the other side of the room and kind of have a competition so I think that's kind of cool that's something I might try soon I'm more of the um, old school start a quiz kind of gal. So I'm going to do an example. If you guys have your iPads handy, um, go ahead and go, if you haven't already, to the Socrative student app and join my room. And the room code is up here at the top, Morocco bio. And I will show you how that looks, the teacher point of view. So we're going to be starting this quiz. So there are four questions. So Aaron's in, Mike's in, there we go. And there are four questions. And then we can show uh, everyone what those questions look like in a moment. But as a teacher, if I am having my students take this uh, quiz during class, this is what I would be watching the entire time as I'm kind of walking around monitoring students. I can see their progression. They're 25% of the way done so far. It kind of gives you a good clue as to how your students are doing. Uh, you can see their scores at the end. So you can see what they're answering. It gives you very quick feedback so you can go over it rather quickly together after everyone's done if you wanted to and talk about some concepts. Jen, I have a I have a question. Yeah. And it could just be um, it could just be because you kind of threw this together real quick. Yes. Uh, so it's giving me immediate feedback, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. As a student, right? Yeah. That my answers are incorrect. It told me the same for every single one too. Okay. Oh. Yeah. But so then it says the correct right. answer is one of the things I picked. Okay. And we'll, we'll go from the teacher point of view here in a moment after you guys finish, and we'll see why that happened. So I'll go to, looks like you're finishing up here. So I can see, like, there was no right answers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. did you designate an answer as correct? I, I did. So let me see if that was something. Go to my quizzes real quick. Here's the one I created. We'll go to the edit screen so you can see that. So I said that all of them were correct. Maybe, that Maybe it wanted us to click all three. Oh, perhaps. Sometimes so, I've had that where I've had where I've tried to have it like two things that you can pick. If you mm -hmm. don't pick both of them, it won't so either. If you or. didn't pick all three, then that was a problem. Okay. I, this is my guess. I'm learning something too. <laughs> all right, so that you cannot do that from this point of view. Um, so I, again, I had more than one answer for pretty much all of them. But then I guess as a teacher, I can kind of see what you picked, and we could talk about those things. And you could have it worth no points if you wanted to as a quick formative assessment. And you did see pop up to things like explanations. On your, you can do that from this point of view um, when you're making a quiz. You can add the correct answer and an explanation so the students can see that quickly. Um, so I like that kind of that feature about uh, Socrative. We hit save here. I'll go back to the live results real quick um, so I can see what everybody picked. Um, if I could do, if there was a score attached, we could see the scores quickly and you could add those into your gradebook. Um, and then if you hit finish, 
I can view, there's reports that you could either save it to your Google Drive or download. You could view a chart with everybody's data like this. Um, and then you can, let me go back to my reports real fast. You can archive them, you can save them, you can always access them here from this screen. So that's a feature I like. I like to go back and look at things to add them into my gradebook later during the day. Um, something that I wanted to point out, let me go back to my quiz that you guys does just took. Grade, Jen, does your grade program, does it allow you to export, do you use online gradebook and it, can you export directly in? Ours does not allow that. Nor does uh, mine. I was wondering if there was one out there that did. I wish. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to see it in that, like, nice, um, if you have the kids put their last name in first and then their first name. I make them just... put their last I tell them they're allowed to make up a funny first name if they want, but it has to be their real last name so that, at, so that I can go right down the order. Of, yes. And the last name has to come first. Yep. I, I like to do that, too, to make it easy to transfer it over manually, I guess, since nothing seems to allow that to happen. I often um, take a photograph of it so I can have it like sitting on my iPad while I'm entering grades on the computer. Um, so I'll do that side by side too, but just have like my iPad up and then have the my computer up too, so I can do that. Here's one of my favorite features, like some of my animations or diagrams, this one's silly obviously down here on the left, um, but you can add little GIFs or animations there uh, and pictures. I think that's really helpful and nice in color um, instead of like a diagram on a you know piece of paper. So it's a feature that I pretty much enjoy about Socrative. Hey, Jen, can you um, get, like, uh, math equations in there very easily? Because I used, like, Kahoot in the past, mm -hmm. and there were two problems I had with it, and I was wondering how Socrative was with that one. One of the problems was Kahoot always had a time limit, and when I yes. was doing, like, Algebra 2 type stuff, the time limit was only, like, two or three minutes. And some of my kids that weren't the faster ones at doing the problems, they wouldn't always finish. So mm -hmm. that was kind of an issue. Um, so is there a time limit thing that you can set, or is it just whenever they get done, they get done? It's and pretty the much whenever they get done, they get done. Um, I'm going to go into the edit again here. Um, let me save and exit and start the quiz from this. And you can choose here. Uh, lots of features. You could do student pace, teacher pace, I believe. You oh, send okay. one question at a time, I guess. Oh, so if I did that, I could make sure that they were all done and then move it on to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you if you did it with student paced, they can kind of skip around. Um, with the one that you guys just took, I did it student pace with immediate feedback. Um, so you get to kind of set the pace. So I would say it works a little bit better than Kahoot in that you don't have to have a time frame. Um, I would say with the math equations, like I don't think it's very user friendly necessarily with the font. Like if you need to superscript or subscript something, but you could probably put in an equation. It might not be as clean looking as you're as you'd like probably. Now one thing I've had is my students argue about whether they want because they like the immediate feedback feature a lot, but they mm -hmm. also want to be able to go out of order. You know, they yes. want to be able to come back to and and, and so you can have one or the other. You don't see I haven't found a way to have both. So there's kind of that limitation that you have to answer them in order. And you can't so, go back. The student, the student pays student navigation. That means the student gets to choose the order. Doesn't matter. I think they can skip around, and then they have at the very end they uh, uh, submit the entire assessment. Yeah, you see, like all the questions, mm -hmm. more like a piece of paper. Uh, so it's not like like we saw where it was one question, and then we went to the other. So, Correct. This screen right here with this decision, this middle one, you can choose and they can they get the whole quiz at one time, I guess. That's pretty much, I guess I use it maybe once or twice a week to get some quick feedback and then go over things right there since they just took it. Hey, one more question, and I yeah. keep comparing this to Kahoot because that's what I've used in the past. Have you used Kahoot as well? And if so... How did you like this versus Kahoot? I feel like Kahoot is more, I like to use it kind of like a review or kind of 
like they get excited about it like it's a game it's a competition and I've never used this as a competition I use it more as quick formative assessment for me um, and I sometimes assign a grade to it depending on how long they've spent with the material oh, okay. so I guess I like this this is more serious I guess and then the Kahoot is more like they're competing, you know, against each other, and we're reviewing together over a concept. So I guess I use this more as fast formative uh, feedback. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I use I like I like, I like both. I use Go ahead. Daily quizzes. I use it almost every day. The kids. What are, one of the things I like about it, you had on one of your features there is you can randomize the order since they're all sitting there with their iPads. Mm -hmm. It's nice that you can have them go in random order so they can't glance over at each other and see because it's a fairly big bar when you pick it it like highlights the whole bar but mm -hmm. if the questions are out of order you can't see if it's just because somebody next to you clicked B doesn't mean B is the correct answer to the question you're working on right now, that and is then on my whole graph it will show the answers as they come in. So, so and so answered question four. So and so answered question two. So and so answered question ten. I, I my things are never more than ten questions long. They're usually between five and ten. So I don't know if I would like this for like a full fifty question test thing. Right. But and how, Jen? Jen how long ha, are the longest things that you've done with these? I would say no more than ten questions tops. So I try to I keep know it short. Sal with Google Forms does like his whole test on them. Oh wow. Well, and I'm because mine's AP, I don't do that because I'm trying to mirror more of what the eventual AP test will be. And the eventual mm -hmm. AP test will be old school paper and pencil. You know, yeah. not the kids don't know how to do that, but I also want to teach them test taking strategies. We have a whole thing about crossing things out and circling, and there's like a whole thing that we do. Mm -hmm. I so, agree. It gives this is great this for is, the daily. Yeah. This you can download and print from like your quiz. So I do do that occasionally for if I had like an absent student, I guess. So I think I think both Socrative and Kahoot are they're they're limited, but they're great for that quick formative assessment, which is why you probably prefer like the ten questions, if not less. Um Jen I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to go back into that screen share. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Can I, can I do it? <laughs> can I see how like how you go and print it for like so if you have a guest teacher and mm -hmm. you want the students to take it, you can go in and and uh, and print it out for them, correct? Right. Hopefully there we go. Download. You can download it. Um so it downloads as a PDF, okay. and then uh, it kind of looks. This is one of my like biology quizzes, and the the uh, pictures are a little small. They're not in color anymore, uh, but it is there, um, I guess. So if I have absent kids, um, and I might not be able to kind of guide them through using their iPad to take the quiz, or if you did have like a substitute, you could do this I guess as a backup plan. Do you, so and I'm asking this you know for your opinion, would mm -hmm. it be redundant or would it be a good use of like your time or your students time to have them do this on paper with a guest teacher and then say like the next day when you're back um, have them do it on their iPads whether they use this or not I mean that's your call but would it be like I said, would it be redundant, or would it? Do you think it would be like beneficial? Uh, I feel personally like it might be a little redundant, but I, the kids might like that if they had the opportunity to take it and then take it again. But I feel like there would need to be maybe a small in between time oh. where, you, where you got to talk about some of those concepts. I guess. Hey, random I, random questions of life, Jen. How did you make it have your your own name as the classroom name? Because I have the randomly generated one that comes up in the first place, and mine is mine is Laquisha, and I don't like that. 
It's not really, but it's like L K S Q H I A. So the kids call it Laquisha. Ah, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, let me go back and see where I started. So, um, it would have to be for next that? year. They'll never get up Laquisha this year, but um, <laughs> for the future. I, um, so I'm guessing I started it right here under settings. Right. So room name. Oh, room right name right there. Okay. There you go. Let me click that. And I try to keep it all the same, like. Um, I guess that I use that for like my Google form is like backslash Morocco bio. So, cause we're using all these different little pieces of technology. I try to just streamline it, I guess. So you feel like so, so creative or so, so creative or whatever. Uh, <laughs> you feel like it's, you use it for one purpose and you use Kahoot for a different purpose. Do you think that if you started using that, um, that rocket, rocket ship or rocket race or whatever it was called, would you <laughs> would you use that instead of um, Kahoot or do you think you would still use Kahoot? I feel like I would still use Kahoot. Uh, I feel like I would use Kahoot for definitely like review gaming stuff and I feel like um, maybe they take, I like that idea of the take the, kid, the quiz twice, maybe they take the quiz solo and then maybe they take it together as a big group and compete against each other. I can see doing uh, what Jen said is she used Kahoot as a review, and that's what I did with my math classes. I used to use Kahoot for our reviews, but I can see using uh, this for something with the and with that space race where um, we do AP exam review questions for my computer science course, and those I always like to have the kids um, work together. And sometimes they'll do problems. That, alone initially but then they'll get together and discuss it and come up with a final answer so that would be nice to put them into teams and just let them discuss the answers for that and then get some feedback you know after they've discussed it with each other right right well I mean do you guys remember Alan November talked about a professor who said uh, that the most that one one of the professors he'd worked with in the past they said that the most successful like um, evidence or whatever that the students were learning is he would have the the kids take the test and then he would have them like go through and talk to each other together so it was almost like they were taking the test and then they would like discuss why they got what they got and figure out what was the right answer and then they would take it again I think I'm not a hundred percent sure they would take it again and after having that like intellectual debate they they grew as learners so this could be I feel like what you're saying is very reflective of what he was saying whether you use Kahoot or this or a combination of the two yeah I like that idea I think that would be that would match up well with what he was saying there I think that gives you the opportunity to see those questions again and help them kind of reflect I feel like especially this week I've been or last week and the beginning of this week going over the exact same thing over and over and over, saying the exact same thing in front of them. And oh, maybe that's maybe this is what they need to do is to take a little quiz and then take it again together. That makes sense. Do any of you have any other ideas of like how you could use it? I saw that there's an exit ticket like button, but I don't know. Is that just like yeah. one or two questions or how does that is that what it is? I'll bring that one up real quick and show you what I saw. If you uh -huh. click on the number of the question, it comes up. Ah, uh, okay. So, there like, yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. So, you know, how did, well did you understand today's material? What did you learn in class today? And then if you had a question on the board, you know, ha have them answer it on their iPad, basically. So mm -hmm. it's, like, kind of pre-set pre up for you, basically. So do you think that students would, um, would actually use that? Um, I think, yeah, if you ask them to, for sure. I always worry about being like, oh, tell me a question. And you're like, well, I don't have a question, so i just leaving. Or like, did you have any questions? Mm, no, even though I did. Right. I think giving them the opportunity to do that, at least my, maybe not every student's going to use it thoughtfully like you'd hope, but a majority could, and then that could give you as a teacher definitely some insight as to what they're thinking. But they don't always, they have a quiz and something else, and they don't always take it seriously either. You know, if True. they have a quiz over their reading, it's not like all of them are going to do their reading. Exactly. 
So I don't know. I'm, I feel like it could be helpful. It probably depends on the class. It probably depends on the material. Um, but like they're always like I don't know. I feel like our whenever I meet with my administrator and we're talking about um, you know what did the kids learn today, this could be a way to gather data quickly. I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that'd be an awesome thing to do if you were being evaluated <laughs> to get that feedback at the end and see if they understood. So, um, hey, the question I had, Jen, was when you were doing the uh, when you were bouncing around there, you went to create yeah. uh, quiz and it had an import questions. H have you ever tried that? And if so, like what format is it looking for stuff in? I'm pretty sure I haven't done it myself, but I was again playing around with it. Um, it looks like Excel, and I've never really made a, a, my own quiz in Excel, so like I think it has to be an Excel file. But let's yeah, just try. Yeah, copy and paste from a Word document, which is where like all of my pre-existing quizzes were. Yes. I mean, you can copy and paste, but it won't import. Mm -hmm. So since you have to kind of do that anyway, this is also just a random tip of life. What I have always done is when I am copying and pasting from the Word document to the Socrative, I do the whole thing including the ABCD in the question, in the like question box at the top and then I take those out while still on that page rather than having to go back and forth between the two things five times for every question. I dump the whole thing in once and then move the other pieces down. That's Does smart. That yeah, so I'll kind of show that if you're watching what she was talking about, if you're creating a quiz. Um, so let's go here. So you're saying... I would put, yeah, the whole thing up there. We lost her. The dog ate her. <laughs> Me? <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, Shannon, that's a really good tip because I would have been that person to be like back and forth and back and forth. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did it for a while. I did it for, and then I thought, you know, there has to be a better way, you know, and then I was, I was being really non-technology. So I'd like print out the quiz because I found it faster to look and retype than it is you know. Now you can make things on your iPad. I always make my quizzes on my real computer as opposed to just because I find it faster to copy and paste or type or do other things on the real computer than on than on the app per se. Yes. But, I find that with anything that we have been working yeah. with, like yeah. using the computer first is I the agree. second nature. Um, so I'm just going to ask, as far as the quiz creation goes, it seems like it's relatively user-friendly, like it doesn't take a lot to figure out. Um, what about somebody who's um, not super tech savvy or not super confident? Do you think that that would be, that, that, that the setup and the creation would be a, a stumbling block at all? Personally, I don't think so. I felt... Like if you're going, if you're just shooting for a small little quick check, um, I don't feel like it takes you very long at all to create the quiz, maybe like 15 minutes or so, um, as long as you kind of know what you're planning on asking. I felt a little intimidated at first by it. It's, like you kind of got to get a feel for like the home page and what you're, where you're heading. And sometimes I, if I don't use it for a while, I'll kind of forget what I'm doing too. So um, I feel like it, it definitely is easy to pick back up So. In terms of entering the information, it's super, I mean, if you can type, you can do it. You do, you, I do forget, as you have even demonstrated, you're like, where is it? But one yeah, of the nice things about this, there aren't that many buttons to pick. You know what I mean? It's not like there are 80 different types of things that you can put together. So e even if you've lost which one it is, it doesn't take that long to click and figure out which one it is that you want. At least I haven't found so. And I, you know, I'm not like the master of remembering how you like program it all up. <laughs> I feel like you're right. It's minimalist, so it's a little, it's a little easy to do. I also feel like in in comparison to Kahoot, you also have more like room to type, like lengthwise. I guess sometimes there's a character limit on your multiple choice questions for Kahoot. So it seems to have like kind of a thumbs up in that direction. Gotcha. Well, I mean, that was 
That's awesome. Uh, so everybody agrees Socrative is, is something that you would feel good about sharing with your staff. Definitely. Okay. Um, Jen, is there anything else that you wanted to show us that you thought would be um, good for us to know or beneficial for us to share? I don't think so. I, I think if you just, as anything that we do, if you just play with it for maybe 10 minutes, you'll either love it or you'll move on. So um, I definitely feel like it's worth it. It's definitely helped decrease some grading for me just to get some quick feedback as well. Um, it's very easy to gather the scores from them. It helps me monitor how much longer they need. Like today I gave a paper and pencil quiz and I was just awkwardly like roaming around like are they done yet? Are they done yet? And this one you get to watch them finish so you know who is still working. And, um, it's it. also really great in terms of, uh, of it's like your, your who got it right, who got it wrong is like green and red and it's mm -hmm. super easy to see which was the question, whether it was worded, whether it's the wording or the concept or whatever else, you will know immediately which, as they're answering which ones are going to be out there. So there have been times where the kids are taking a quiz and I'm watching it and I'll say to the kids, think about this carefully as yeah, I see people are struggling with this one, think about it, you know, whatever else out there. You can, it's, it's very live action as it's happening. Yes, and then at the bottom you can see percentages like, you know, 50% of your kids missed number two, so you can immediately go, uh-oh, we better talk about number two right now. I will say a pitfall I noticed is like kids, I have had a couple kids like sign in, take the quiz, and then like they did terrible, and then they signed back in and took it again. So if you like see their name on there twice, you're like... Oh, which one is their correct one? Obviously, it's yeah. The, we have a rule that first time's your time. You know, there's no there's no double dip in, in there that you can't. And that's very since you make the kids use their own name. You know, if you do that, then you can say sorry, nope. You know, Jones yeah. already has one, so that's what's going to stand. Or if the kids, but I meant to click. And one of the things that's nice is that since they're small quizzes rather than the whole test. Even if, yeah, sometimes you do, because I've had this happen on Kahoot and other stuff. You're so, like, and you're punching the number, and you can't, you know, it, you get, you punch the wrong one. I'm like, it's one point out of the world. It's not, you right. know, your whole test. It's not your whole life. It's not, you know, there'll be one tomorrow. You'll do better then. <laughs> but then I run down for my lack of sympathy on these sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it pretty reliable, Jen, as far as, like, I've been doing cahoots with kids at times before, and, like, somebody will go, hey, I just got thrown out. And, like, then you're like, well, well sorry, jump, jump back in. <laughs> you know, but. Right. I haven't had anyone complain about getting kicked off the Socrative app. Um, I've had it not load. Like, it's, like, you know, going, 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 and I just hand them an extra iPad that I have, and it usually get them going pretty quickly. So I haven't had that problem. Shannon, have you got anyone ever kicked off? No. So, I don't know. I, I have had that happen a lot with Kahoot, though, where they get kicked out and they have to join back in. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Are there any other questions? I can't think of any other than the ones I already asked. It's just a really cool little app, I guess, and I use it probably twice a week just to gather some data for me. And it can sometimes count for a grade. Sometimes I'll say this is just a you know quick assessment, I want to see where we're at. Um, I think it just depends, too, on the material. Like, right now I'm doing Punnett Square, so I did go formative. I used that so I could see them working out the problems with their, you know, stylus. And sometimes if it's just a quick multiple choice kind of thing, then I'm going to use Socrative, I guess. Pick the one that's appropriate. How yeah. long have you been using it with your kids? Um, probably since... November, okay. Maybe September, maybe early November. Have Have you or have they hit a wall where you're like, okay, guys, we're gonna do a Socrative, and they're just like, ah, oh, again, or anything like that, or are they still like engaged? <laughs> oh, um, I don't think they're engaged with anything right now, personally, <laughs> but um, <laughs> they're ready for spring break or a snow day. But um, I think. Some of them, uh, they like it because it's in color, so I always kind of tempt them with that because I think it's hard on a flat you know, piece of paper to see a double helix 
DNA moving, so I don't know. My kids are just used to it. I mean, it was kind of fun when they first did it, but it's like anything else. It's just part of, for us, the culture of what it is you're doing. It's not gee whizzy and gauging, but it's also not, you know, I mean, it's just there. It's just, it's like the online textbook. Some of them like it in really a lot in the beginning, and then some are like, yeah, it's there. I do this. I do, you know, it's just, it's what, I don't get impressed when I read on an e-reader anymore because that's what, that, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a part of the part of the gig. Right. I still feel like Kahoot is the thing that really sucks them in where they're, like, super excited to play no matter well, what. Well, a competition, but I don't think, see, for me, I never use that for assessment in the classroom. We do use it for review. But with AP kids, I don't want to teach them to go fast. I want to make sure right. they're slowing down. You know what I mean? I want them to, it's really important that you read the answers and that you do, we'll do it for like key people or key, that. you know what I mean? And then we'll do it, we'll do it like that. But it's, I, I don't like the race element of, of that for, again, since my Socratives are, are a, an actual grade too. So that changes, you know, the how game. you're using it, at least for me. That makes sense. All right, so anybody else have anything they want to share or ask or talk about? Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and joining our teacher feature from College Radio Ohio on Socrates. So, so like it's like Socrates. <laughs> Socrates asked questions. Oh, see, that's what I thought, but everybody said Socrates, so I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna tweet you and find out how to pronounce it correctly. All so right. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you again for presenting. Have a great day, guys. Hey. Bye. Bye. Bye.